Hello, last talk. So uh, let's go through it. But it will be fun and a lot of pictures, don't worry. Um, so we'll go quickly through these six uh, case studies, success stories of you, your teams, uh, that we did uh, some documentation during the last 12 months. So let's straight dive into it. The first uh, success story is geological, geological surveys. And this one is from Indonesia, uh, where they found a new copper uh, for, uh, that could e increase the copper production of Indonesia by 10 to 15 percent, which is already quite big. And the uh, new copper, copper mine should last for 30 years. So conventionally, they, they have a GPS device, GNSS device in the hand. They take the notes in a, in a notebook, uh, with pen and paper. They took a photo by camera and then they will need to, in, in the office, transcribe everything to the, to the GIS or documentation system. You can imagine that it's quite um, error prone because there are a lot of errors in transcribing. Uh, you don't have live results to the managers and it's frankly hard to match the photos from the, that are very similar to the points and it's very slow. So they choose merging maps um, and uh, they have like four people in the field and two, two GIS administrators in the office. And they set up emerging maps and QGIS ecosystem. So they designed uh, tables, uh, data structure in the, in the office. And they set up uh, various uh, uh, limits and attributes that are easy to fill. Uh, so they are, they are taking uh, drill holes and lines, trenches, and uh, they are surveying lithography of the, of the terrain to um, specify the, the new mine. And they attach pictures directly from the application. Uh, you can also record who was in the field and when, so it's easy to track the changes. And you can set up a constraint so the data quality is directly good when, when you have it in the office. Um, so this is, uh, uh, this is how they uh, do these drill holes at Mendrika Copper Gold. Uh, so this is the first one. Um, second one is from Australia, uh, where we have a firefighter brigade that is volunteer. So in Australia, when you have uh, uh, less than 50 hectares of the, of, the, of the area, it's taking care of the volunteer groups. And even if, and only if the fire is bigger than some size, the, 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 the country fire brigades are, are called. So one of these fire brigade uh, volunteer for, uh, is uh, using merging maps. And uh, what they do with it? Uh, so first of all, uh, it starts pretty much now. Before the, the fire season, they go outside with the merging maps project and they need to map what they map. They map water points they map reservoirs of water and they map how much water is it there. So when the fire occurs, they know where to get the water. Also, they um, map the hydrants uh, in areas because they have some governmental data, but they need to go there before the season and check if it is working or not, if it is accessible. Also, they are tra mapping the, the, the roads because the roads could be damaged after the winter or they couldn't be accessible by big, big trucks anymore. So, uh, and also they map fauna flora because before the season, they sometimes burn the area uh, to, um, so when the fire occurs, it's, it's, it's harder for fire to spread to larger areas. So you see, they have this merging maps project. This is a mobile application or they use it in tablets and they have these roads and uh, the color represent the, 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 the truck size that can that access the roads. And also they have these, uh, these uh, water points here. Um, they also map some property types and other, other features. And when it's done, they, they put it in uh, tablets in the, in, the, in the trucks. So when the fire occurs, they have all the data in the trucks offline. Uh, they also use QGIS for fire simulation. So they have some uh, simulation methods. So for example, here is some popular parking place for tourists in the area. And they simulate the, when someone, let's say, uh, start a fire here by cigarette or something. So how it spreads. So this is calculated by some numerical models. 
and they know how the, the, the fire is spreading and they can like train uh, in a field with their brigade like what they, they would do in this case. Um, so then there is the fire sometimes and uh, how it is done uh, is that you have a projector and you have a open street map, map a projected on a whiteboard and then the vehicles call you and they use stuff so you use a marker to, to mark like what's going on and they are prototyping at the moment uh, some live uh, synchronization of data with merging maps and QGIS so this could be uh, stored in the trucks on the tablets because they already have merging maps there so it's kind of extension but this is just the prototyping but it could, it could help a lot during the fire let's go to the next uh, success story so this one is uh, fiber network design this one is from Belgium and it is uh, by Jacobs company and uh, what is also nice on QGIS and open source and merging maps is that you can start from simple and then um, move to more advanced workflows so they they start with some prototyping try it out and then it's easy to to get because you have the project in QGIS so if you prototype it you can add some fields you can modify what you are what you are storing in the data you can add some limits and you can do it every, everything yourself so you don't need to ask some external company to modify your project um, so this, these guys they were uh, doing so this is a fiber optics network uh, in the final state so it connects your house uh, to, to the network and you get the internet connection and uh, before they build the network they were using uh, the merging maps and QGIS to um, verify cross-check governmental data so they actually go to the to the to the houses or flats and capture photos capture contacts capture how many units is there in the house what is the exact location where to place a pot and this is all done by non-technical people so they don't didn't 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 need to do any training for for this capturing so they of course you need to have a technical gis user in the office that set up the project but in the field it's easy to navigate even if you are not gis person non-technical person that's that's uh, how they did it and they uh, really like that uh, as i said that you can go with this workflow you can start prototyping adding your fields very easily very flexible <clears throat> so let's uh, go to the next one this is a construction and engineering case study and this is uh, also from belgium uh, so uh, this is a belgian road research center uh, it's a organization that takes care of the research of the roads in belgium and uh, the conventional method is again they uh, have some data in excel spreadsheets they've put in a, in a laptop in a field they have some handwritten notes they they use some uh, single s3 license on the shared uh, remote desktop or uh, or some shared computer and then uh, when you get back to the office you need to add everything to the to the to the single installation um, of course with QGIS you can have any many licenses you like so everyone has now ac access to merging mass projects QGIS project all the data um, and also it's uh, way more cost effective and uh, to um, because they can set up everything themselves uh, they can have field licenses so it's not uh, as it is open source the, the merging maps mobile application they again don't need to pay for each mobile um, installation so they have quite uh, advanced setup uh, with many integrations many different hardware software you, you see here again that there is merging maps on a tablet and QGIS in a laptop and they have various uh, jobs in the Belgian roads what is very interesting uh, cast by us is this pedestrian pavement quality so they are evaluating the, uh, the accessibility of the sidewalks in the cities and they have this like really special uh, wheelchair with the max art external device that they use to um, go through the sidewalks and uh, checking uh, if it is accessible or not or if it's some damage uh, they are also using these external GNSS devices of course for for other jobs um, uh, in their in their um, work 
Uh, next, uh, we are in South Africa, and uh, uh, the company AgriMotion, they developed the uh, MP platform, which is a web platform, and also they use QGIS and merging maps. They have around 200 farmers in uh, South Africa, and uh, they are consultants. They are helping the farmers to um, improve their procedures, get more uh, fruits or food from their land, uh, help them. And uh, before, uh, I had it written down because it's quite complicated, before uh, these QGIS and merging maps, they have a project in QGIS, then they exported it to the point grid, then they imported it to Fulcrum, then the farmers did a survey, then they exported it again back to Excel from Fulcrum, then they use PyQGIS to parse the Excel and get, get the data into uh, some normal structure. And then, then they export it to the web map and then they put a PDF effort to the client with the suggestions. Um, if you have 200 farmers uh, and you do this, this is not great. So, um, so this is a screenshot from their app. So this is one of the farmer. So they are tracking the, the various attributes, um, uh, various indexes and uh, procedures. And the farmers now, uh, they, set up, they set up their projects. They can use various integration to split the big projects to farms and so on. Some of the farmers doesn't see the other farmers' data. And you see the farmers nowadays just use merging maps. They have very detailed manual how to use it because these farmers are usually non-technical guys. And, uh, but everyone has a mobile phone nowadays, so it's good. You don't need anything else for this. And uh, they have some tabs where the farmers take the photos. They set uh, per, uh, every week or time to time various attributes. And nowadays when the consultant comes to the farm, he already has everything prepared. So it's way faster and way, way more easy for the farmers and everyone to track it. Uh, now I have the, the last one, the, the archaeology, uh, and uh, this one is the recent one, and it's from Sweden, from the Uppsala University. Uh, this one uh, we published, I think, uh, a few weeks ago, and the university, they uh, teach um, archaeology, and this is an excavation uh, course. Uh, it's a uh, very smart because uh, before this course in the field, they have a QGIS or GIS course. So they already know how to work with QGIS. Um, and then they go to the field. Uh, before they, they need to, again, do these conventional methods. So they need to use, uh, uh, connect the handwritten notes to, to the measurements from the external GNSS device now, nowadays. Uh, they use merging maps, and uh, again, they, they, they have this external GNSS device. What is, what is nice on this is that uh, uh, it's, um, nowadays they need to spend way less time transcribing their field notes in the evening or afternoon to the GIS, because now everything is already in the QGIS when they come back. And the data quality is very good, so they do some quality checks nowadays, but they don't need to transcribe it. So they have better data and more time to actually do some research on this. So then, uh, with this archaeology, it's kind of destructive process by nature, because once you, you dig somewhere, you cannot undig it. So, uh, so it's very critical that uh, you capture the data and everything right on the first time, because you cannot repeat it many times, and, um, and uh, th there is some project to, to, to Swedish government to archive this data, if I understand. Um, so they use these this merging maps to, to get the data. Um, what, they, uh, what, what this farmstead, uh, for example, one specialty there is that they track some, um, it's called post hole, it's like a dark place in a in a ground where the wooden wooden pole was, so so they can track like where were the buildings and so on. Also, what is nice on the project, I hope that I have the 
in. Uh, yes, so you see them uh, here in a, in a field uh, doing the research. They are a uh, few weeks uh, have this uh, course. And what is, what is nice is that um, with this QGIS and merging maps, uh, so first in QGIS, you can add a background, background maps with, for example, some old maps of the place. So you see, see a bigger picture. If you are in, in a place and you are doing the, 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 some excavation on some very small area, it's often nice that you see kind of like bigger picture of the area. You see what was excavated last year. They did do this from the year 2016, I believe. So uh, next year will be the last year for this place. They will move to a different one. But they can already see uh, what was done the years before. They can make some maps of the, where the buildings were. So, so people in the field, they have like very better understanding of the, of the global picture of this. So, uh, if you want to know more about merging maps, uh, come to the presentation tomorrow by Tomáš, where it will be more like about the features that are new and coming and we developed it last year. And also we have a workshop, which will be, I hope the weather will be good, good so, so we will go outside and we will try the claim that you can do some field survey without any training. Uh, see if it is, if it is uh, correct or not. Um, and uh, there is a special event after the workshop at 15 tomorrow with this coffee break, we will celebrate a new book. Uh, we will have a small celebration during the coffee break. So feel free to come also there. Uh, that's, that's all from me. Um, thank you very much. I'm open to questions. Thank you, Peter, very much. Now it's uh, room to, to ask some questions. What's the most uh, surprising or creative use of merging maps that you've seen so far? Yeah, I was going through these uh, documents we have from the case studies and this as shown is really surprising to me because every case study, every use case is very different because both QGIS and merging maps, they are like generic tools. So you can like model them to do what you want and uh, people are very creative. So um, i always surprised about what, what could be done uh, to, to, to help. So, so yeah, I, I cannot tell, but uh, for example, I was really surprised by these firefighters uh, when I see it the first time, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Ah, mosquitoes are coming. So uh, what I want to say is that um, hopefully next year I will be doing presentation about your case study use cases because uh, I will do completely new use cases next year, hopefully. So I'm looking forward for your use cases. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the presentation.